Should we cancel Babar? What? <laughs> yes, I am talking about The Story of Babar by Jean de Bronhoff. Today we're going to be talking about this picture book and I think some of the very, very interesting and nuanced arguments that are surrounding this picture book and um, and some of my thoughts around it. Okay, so if you haven't been here before, I'm Shelly, and um, this is my, my booktube channel where I love talking about books, um, including children's books, um, which is a huge passion of mine. And yeah, okay, so on Friday, I talked about the story of Babar, and ever since Friday, in my Friday Reads video, I have not stopped thinking about this book because something didn't sit right with me. Um, and I, as, as when things don't sit right with me, and because I am a processor where I like to talk things out, it means that I have not stopped talking about Babar to my husband for the last three days. And today we, he and I, were able to kind of parse out my feelings and <laughs> not just feelings, but parse out two sides of an argument that I wanted to present to you all. And I definitely wanted to get your thoughts on it because I think it's fascinating. So um, first of all, I have some notes right here. First of all, I wanted to say thank you so much for anybody who sent me um, a get well message because um, not only did I really appreciate them, but they really did cheer me up, which, you know, is, is just so sweet of y'all. I also wanted to say that I get a ton out of filming videos. It is a joy to me. And so filming while I'm sick, it, you know, being sick and not being able, able to film feel, feels like a punishment. Um, you know, from the universe, because I just really enjoy doing this. It, it, it's a lot of fun for me. So let's get into the story. Oh, I also wanted to mention that I might put in some fancy editing um, of the pictures in the story of Babar, because I want to um, not hold and find the pictures and get in the way of the conversation, essentially. So, like I said, when I talked about Babar, something didn't sit right with me. And I'm going to give a summary that is going to be presented in a way that um, reflects my views of what wasn't sitting well. So the story of Babar is about Babar the elephant who lives in the forest with all of the other elephants. One day, a hunter comes uh, into the forest and kills Babar's mother. From there, Babar runs away from the forest into the city. He is noticing these, his environment in the city and notices that everybody is dressed. Um, from there, he wants to be dressed. And he runs into an old lady who is wealthy and she decides that she gives him money in order to buy a suit. Babar buys a suit. He also befriends the old lady and she um, invites him to dinner parties and educates him. And he spends two years in the city, essentially learning and growing and becoming cultured. From there, his cousins come into town. They are in, they are not dressed and they're running on all fours. At this point in the book, Babar is standing upright and is always fully dressed. So, Babar decides to dress Arthur, Arthur and Celeste. They hang out together. From there, um, they all go back to the forest. All of them are all now standing upright, dressed in very fine clothing. They go back to the forest, and on their way back, the king of the forest um, dies. The elders of the elephants come together and decide that Babar would make a wonderful king. Um, all of the elephants are on uh, standing animalistically. They're standing on all fours. They're not dressed, whereas Celeste, Babar, and um, Arthur are dressed and standing upright. And they appoint Babar king of the elephants. Babar marries Celeste. She becomes queen of the elephants, and they live happily ever after. So that is how I was uh, reading the book. And um, I say was because I have found an article that definitely presents a different side of the book that I didn't think about. 
And in this day and age, I began wondering why isn't Dave Runhoff, um, I'm not really exactly sure how to say his name, but that's how I'm saying it, why is he not being canceled like Dr. Seuss? To be clear, I actually, um, I know that the cancel culture uh, idea is a very big and complex one, but if I were to reduce it to one thought, I don't really support the idea of canceling things and authors um, like Dr. Seuss or Flannery O'Connor. I believe that they are the paths to bigger and more complex conversations and to just write them off and erase them is very reductionistic and a bit childish, in my opinion. Wow, I'm, I'm really hot and heavy today about with the opinions. Okay, so I found this article um, from the, I didn't find it, my husband found it because He's very sweet, and he was being very supportive in my constant thinking about Babar. Um, and the article, which I did print because I am very old school, the article is called Freeing the Elephants, What Babar Brought, and it's by Adam Gopnik. And it was published September 15th, 2008. And Gopnik summarized my feelings about the problems that I saw in this sentence here. There's small cuts uh, here because I wanted to make sure that I'm reading it in well and sometimes I mess up and I, you know, just starting over and wanting to, to get it right. So, Babar, such interpreters have insisted, is an allegory of French colonization as seen by the complacent colonizers. The Af naked African natives represented by the good elephants are brought to the imperial capital, occultured, and then sent back to their homeland on a civilizing mission. And that's how I saw it. I was like, oh, so Babar runs away from his barbaric land, he is cultured, and then he gets to be sent back made king because for no apparent reason, except for that he was from the city or was somehow well loved in the years that he was gone and becomes their leader, which is what I saw. But Gopnik actually presents another side of the argument, which I thought was really, really interesting and I definitely wanted to share it on here. So he goes on to the right, Gopnik. Um, Yet those who would burn, now would now we would cancel it, but for those who would burn Babar, miss the true subject of the books. He's talking about the whole um, Bronhoff saga, which is six books. Bronhoff died at, De Bronhoff died um, in his 30s, and when his son was old enough, his son picked up the Babar saga and continued uh, illustrating and writing the stories. So. Those who would burn Babar miss the, su the true subjects of the books. The Din Bronha saga is not an unconscious express expression of the French colonial imagination. It is a self-conscious comedy about the French colonial imagination and its close relation to the French domestic imagination. There was a cut because my camera shut off. So Gopnik goes on to write that one can forget reading the critics that the books are first and foremost meant to be funny. That Babar is an elephant who walks and talks. The story is happening to creatures that children know. Do not write ele do not write elevator that children know. Do not write elevators, wear suits, or build buildings. Part of the joke is in the way the obvious animalness of the protagonist makes evident the absurdity of the human behavior depicted. And I'm really glad that Gopnik decided to include this uh, sentence because sometimes I think that. Um, nowadays, in our current society, we see one thing and we forget that this, it wasn't intended, the story of Babar, um, according at least to Gopnik, wasn't intended to cause an uproar, that he did it, it with a sense of fun, with a sense of poking fun at the um, absurdity of what he drew, and indeed there are definitely scenes that seem very absurd. One of which is when Babar is standing around having a conversation with the old lady and some of her guests, and he's just standing there in a full suit, just like one of them, and that's pretty absurd. There is also um, the part where Arthur and Celeste, um, uh, Babar takes Arthur and Celeste to a pastry shop, which is also absurd, and everybody just, you know, accepts it as they are 
human-like. They also never transform to being human. They are just human-like. Um, just uh, they they take on these qualities of being human. So these anthropomorphic qualities, or they have human behaviors, I should say. And um, I'm gonna link, link this article below because um, Gopnik talks a lot about the art and the influence of art and um, the structure that the French work so hard to create. Structure as in like the rules in society and the, um, the expectations that one has and yet to live up to those expectations is really difficult as Gopnik points out and that Fraunhoff is poking fun at the difficulty of living in a structure that is self-made. Um, and then Gopnik concludes with this which I thought was fantastic and it is far more than an allegory of col colonialism. Sorry, let me start that again. Far more than an allegory of colonialism, the Babar books are a fable of the difficulties of a bourgeois life. Truly, it is not easy to bring up a family ba Babar size at one point, and it is true. The city lives on the edge of a desert. The animals wander in and out at will, and then wander out again to make cities of their own. The civilizing principle is energetic, but essentially comical, solid looking on the outside, but fragile in its foundations, reducible to rubble by rhinoceroses. Because later on in the um, series, rhinoceros, spoiler alert, rhinoceroses come in and they steal, the, um, they, they um, destroy the cities. Um, and even an elephant, for all their living and um, sailor suits can be turned into slaves through a bad twist of fate. The unruliness of natural life is countered by the beautiful symmetries of classical style and the absurd outlines of domestic life. But we are kidding ourselves if we imagine that we are really safe. And um, I thought that that was really an interesting take on some of the critiques, I guess, at the time. This was, you know, 11 years old. The critiques at the time about Babar pushing French colonization. And it's really easy to see that. And there is a part of me that thinks that Brunhoff, de Brunhoff, I'm not really, de Brunhoff, I'm gonna not worry about it right now, that he was a product of his time and that maybe he did write a story that had these underlining themes of French colonization. However, the story isn't meant to be a, a, a book that push, pushes that propaganda. Um, at least that's what Gopnik's argument is. And I would tend to, to agree that there is a childishness, an absurdity, and a element of fun within the story, even if it does have tones of French colonization in it. And one cannot ignore that in the 1930s, French colonization was going on at the time. So I don't know. I am, I think that this book is really interesting. I'm holding it now. I think that Babar is a really interesting book. I think it is a, a fascinating object of history. And I think that whether you believe that it pushes the idea of French colonization, it is the path to a conversation, or whether you think that it is an a poking fun of the absurdity of the structures that we create, create in our life. Um, again, another path to, call, to a conversation and all done through the easy path of a picture book. And yeah, that's it. I really wanna know what you think. This is something that's been eating away at me. Eating away is not the right term that has been swirling around in my brain for multiple days, and I definitely wanted to talk about it. Um, thank you so, so, so much for, um, for, for being here and for talking about Babar with me. I look forward to your comments below, and I will see you all in my next one. Bye, guys.